Welcome, stranger. Welcome to the Lucky Die, a 5e Dungeons and Dragons actual play podcast. In the lands of Discora, tensions between the factions have made soldiers of the peaceful. Demons and celestials have increased their rampage across the lands. The dead refuse to stay dead, and blood red clouds boil across the sky. You would be forgiven for thinking that the end was nigh. But that's tomorrow's problem, because today we find Balance, Rorschach, and Zoltana in prison. Should we worry? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome to the Lucky Die. Boys and girls, we find ourselves in Falsum. Falsum is a town between the dusk and the dawn. Our two major alliances and major factions on this continent of Discora. There is a desert that acts as a natural border between the two. On this border, there is, upon the dusk side, there is a town, and this town is Falsum. It's a very hot place, except when the winds blow from the north off the uh, cold mountains. And Falsum itself is over 3,000 years old. The buildings tend to be wood affairs and the doors are usually left open, but with strip hangers to, you know, let in the breeze on occasion. And the streets are paved with large light coloured rocks and they're quite uneven. On the edge of this town, there is a small prison, which is where we find our crew. This small prison, it has two floors, one subterranean, and it's built in a square. Surrounding the building, there is a 20 foot high, five foot wide wall with a single watchtower to the south. There is a large open to the sky area essentially within this building for exercising and eating mainly. Um, There are benches, tables, weights, everything is there. There's also a small temple area which is non-denominal so anyone of any faith could go and, you know, pay their respects and get in touch with their spirits. The cells themselves are either in solo or they're in pairs. And And the cells that are in the subterranean level are towards those prisoners who need high security. Um, The prison is patrolled by a series of martial and magically inclined guards, and the prison itself contains between about 20 and 30 prisoners on any given time. Mostly small level stuff like assault, robbery, fraud, that kind of stuff. And within the prison, there are three classes of prisoner. There's class three, which includes robbery and fraud, which most of the people are here for. There's class two, which includes accidental murder, wanton physical harm and abuse. Not so many of those guys. And then finally, class one, murder with intent, necromancy and dark level shit. That's basically the breakdown of the three different classes here. Um, Most of the prisoners will be wearing flat sandals. They'll have long, dark grey trousers, no belt, just a single button. Um, They have light brown shirts with a high collar and either long or short sleeves. Um, Everyone is wearing an anti-magic anklet, um, just so that you can't just randomly chuck firebolts at one another within a prison, because that's probably a pretty bad idea. We are going to start by focusing on a guard named Caden. He is human, he's got a mass of dark curly hair, and he has a dark beard, he's in his late 20s. You guys, within yourselves individually, you see the sun beginning to come through the bars. Um, All three of you are located on the subterranean levels, and the light comes in at the very top of your cell. You only have a very small amount of light, letting you know that it's in fact morning. And Caden goes outside of Sultana's cell, and he bangs on the door, And do you want to tell us what Sultana looks like? She is um, a dwarf. She is uh, a little bit, I I think she's about average height for a dwarf. She's got dark brown hair. She's tan. She's buff. Uh, She's snarly. 
She's got a cool eyebrow ring. Uh, <laughs> she looks like someone you wouldn't want to mess with. Uh, importantly, does Sultana have short sleeves or long sleeves? She is wearing long sleeves. Sultana is wearing the long sleeves. Um, Caden wraps on your bars. It's about this time in the morning in which you get let out to go have breakfast, um, to wander about the yard as such. And um, you hear the keys rattling and you see the uh, the cell door open. And you see the young man standing there with a, just standing in front of you, just looking at you, giving you a smile. And he says, morning, Sultana. Morning, Caden. Uh, another beautiful day at Folsom, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 certainly very nice out. Um, I th- I, th- I thought I'd let you guys out. Uh, um, the, the first today. It's uh, uh, it's gonna gonna be one one of those days. I, I feel Lin- Lyndon is uh, he's he's on the warpath. So just just be careful. Try try and stay out of trouble. Well, you know me, me and trouble. We're uh, we're the old best friends. best friends. <laughs> Um, t- 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 take it easy. There's 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 a new girl in, in in breakfast. So there's a new girl in oh, like in the kitchen staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's you know, she she's a bit of a quiet meek thing. I, d- I don't know how how long she'll last, but you know, give 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 her give her a chance. All right, all right. Only because you-, you said so, and she like winks at him, <laughs> smiles. Uh, he stands to one side and 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 lets you out. Right. And then as soon as you're out, he, uh, he he closes the cell, but he doesn't lock it. You guys are pretty much free to come and go. Um, there are plenty of guards about, as you can see this morning. Where are you heading to? No, it's right, right early in the morning, right? So, yeah, uh, it's pretty much first thing. It's it's breakfast call. Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, essentially, you'll be heading yourself up towards that open area and up towards where, uh, where, the, where the kitchen staff are serving. Um, but we're going to stay with Caden as he moves on to the cell adjacent to yours. Yeah, and uh, we come across Roljak. Would you like to us what Roljak looks like? Uh, Roljak is a tall black dragonborn. He has a um, his lower jaw from his mouth down and some into his neck is a red color. Um, he is tall, but he's not very muscular like you imagine a dragonborn would be. He has very broad um, kind of bone bone structure. Like you imagine that he could be a very large person, but he's not. Instead, he's just kind of uh, athletic. He doesn't have the pants. He has like wrappings around his legs, um, but he is wearing the usual prison shirt. So you're wearing the long sleeves or the short sleeves? Short sleeves. Wearing short sleeves. Um, as he opens up the uh, as he opens up your cell, he looks you up and down and you realize um he gives you a bit of a frown as he looks at at your shirt especially around the, the you know the the um the collar line and he gives you a bit of a frown and he says you you've ru- ru- ruined another one L- Lyndon's not not going to be happy and as you look down you can see that the uh, uh the top of your shirt is kind of it's ruined partially like torn apart and uh, frayed Lyndon doesn't have to give me another one you, you you know you know you know what he he's like he's he he's on the rampage if you can can hide behind another today i'd 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 rec- recommend it well thank you for the thank you for the suggestion kaden you, you you're you're welcome that there's there's a new new girl she'll try try not not to frighten her oh you know me <laughs> not <laughs> I, I, exactly I do. the most frightening character <laughs> He, uh, he stands to one side and, and lets you through. Where are you headed? It is first thing in the morning. Um, I'm free to go wherever. Pretty much, yeah. I'm going to go to the quietest place I can find. That's probably going to be the temple. That is correct. Um, absolutely, 100%. Um, so, okay, we're going to leave you heading in that general direction then. And finally, Caden, well, not finally, uh, not finally, but uh, finally for this following of Caden, we come outside... Another cell. And within this cell, there is our final character, Balance. So what does Balance look like this morning? Balance is fairly tall for a high elf, standing at six foot two. He's skinny but well-toned, pale skin and short-cut silver hair. Uh, He's gaunt and with a bit of a sunken face befitting one who has seen some horrors in his past and had many restless nights. On his uh, forehead, there is a faded black tattoo of thorn-covered vines. And uh, he is definitely wearing the short-sleeved uh, prisoner garb. Ah, excellent. Um, 
he Caden opens his cell and he looks in and he says, uh, 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 "Are you going going to come come out out today?" No, you know that's not something I'm interested in. Please have my breakfast brought here. Thank you. I I I I would not norm, normally. I I don't mind leaving you to your your meditations, but but Lin, Lyndon is on on the path today. If if he catch, catches you not not on the, the parade grounds, he you you could be in far, far worse trouble. Balance just kind of slits out a long sigh. <sighs> Very well. It 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 will be good for you. It is actually a a, a, re, a really nice day today. And he steps aside to let you through. Balance, uh, after a moment, stands up, stretches his legs out. He's been definitely meditating for a long while. (laughs) And uh, as he steps out, he says to Caden, perhaps today may be a good day for me to step out. Who knows? It has been a long time. It, it it has you you've been here m- most of the time that that I I know other other than with with Lyndon approaching but but may, maybe you maybe it would would be good for you to try and make make friends with with some of the other prisoners not not be be so lonely my f- perhaps but most likely not he gives you like a grim smile and steps aside to to let you through where are you headed this morning. Balance is probably going to go to uh, the go to breakfast and try to get his breakfast, and then sit in like the furthest corner by himself. <laughs> okay, um, so Caden continues going on, letting out some other other prisoners behind you. You know, further along his his particular ward this morning, um, and as you make your way up to to the proving grounds in the centre there, um, you see. That you, the, the kind of the quietest corner in this would probably again be be the temple. Um, there's currently a dragonborn sitting over there on his own, looking a bit uh, tattered and worn, I guess. Um, he's a uh, he doesn't wear the normal attire of everyone else, especially as a uh, with the wrappings on his legs rather than the trousers. And you can see that his uh, his shirt is frayed around the neck. Um, but as you go towards the breakfast, um, you find yourself in the in the queue behind the uh, the kind of uh, gruff looking dwarf. Who uh, who's standing in front of you? And as you guys come to this kind of breakfast serving area, you see this—you see the woman that um, that Caden was speaking to you about before. And she has like kind of like mousy brown hair that she has up in a little bun, and she's wearing you know the, the usual attire of just like a, a plain shirt and some plain trousers. And she's serving out like um, kind of a bit like porridge or gruel. I don't know what your equivalent is over there in America. <laughs> I don't know if you have porridge. Both both <laughs> but, terms work. <laughs> okay, she's doing. She's serving gruel because I think that's made of water. So she's serving. She's serving gruel, um, and she's putting. You know, as um, as Zoltana comes up, she pulls out one of the kind of the, the kind of like cheaply made bowls, and she pours like two big helpings into your breakfast. This is probably about thirty percent more than you would normally have. She. It's not that she's not paying attention. It's just that she's. You know carefully deliberating putting lots of extra food on some on like at least the person in front of you and yourself so here you are uh zoltana uh i'm gonna take my food and a uh, nod to the new lunch lady and uh do i like what does she look like um she's kind of uh she has like a she has like like mousy brown hair and she's got um really big brown eyes um and she's like her face is covered in in like a a thin layer of freckles she probably looks like she's in her like very early 20s probably late teens she's human um and uh she's you notice that her arms are shaking a little bit as she serves you because you look particularly gruff um (laughs) but she's she's keeping her metal as best she can to be fair you're probably only the second person she served this morning (laughs) Um, hi. Hey. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Pretty nice day. And she gives the woman like a toothy smile. <laughs> she gives you like half a smile back. Um, and then you're essentially ushered on as she pulls out another bowl and she hands it. Uh, she, again, she fills this up quite a lot. Um, balance. Can I get you to make a perception check for me? Absolutely. Uh, that's a 14. 
with a 14, you can see that Kythea is, uh, as much as she's shaking and she's like looking each person that she serves in the eye, you also notice that she's under this gaze of like looking particularly vulnerable. She's actually studying people. And I she like serves it. you, yeah, she serves you two particularly large scoops of gruel into your bowl and she hands them over and she says, uh, hi. Good morning. Uh, pleasant day, huh? Mm, I suppose it's been a while since I've been out of my cell. It seems like a fine day though, yes? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, out of your cell, do you not, uh, do you not have privileges? No, I suppose I do have the privileges. I just prefer not to be about. I much prefer my meditations, you understand, I'm sure. I do. Um, well, if you ever need to be at peace, there's always the temple, and I can always try and bring you food if need be. Um, not nice to have met you. And uh, she pulls the bowl out and begins to serve the next person in line, who is a, a another dwarf. Um, he's got uh, fiery short hair, doesn't have a beard, has a, a tattoo of a skull and a couple of dice eyes um, just on the side of his cheek. Um, so what do you guys want to do? Uh, Rolljack hasn't got any breakfast. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> just bear that in mind. <laughs> uh, Balance is going definitely going to go to the temple since he knows that's probably the only place where he'll, he'll get some peace. Yeah, um, as you make your way, it's almost in the opposite corner to where uh, the breakfast bar slash food uh, handing out area is. Um, you pass quite a, you know, quite a group of them. You can see that as you're walking away over there, over to one side, you can see a group clearly of the double ones that are already beginning to build up this morning. Um, essentially, anyone who has the tattoo of that, um, of of the of the skull and, and the dice. Um, and you can see that elsewhere there's a couple of groups of elves clumping together and like the only two humans here, um, they seem to be, you know, they seem to be bonding together sort of in the middle doing training and such like. Um, but you you make your way over, over to the temple. The temple is shaded slightly within this area um, and there's a couple of a couple of pews. Not many people tend to sit over here because well, religion is slightly sacrosanct. I mean, it's the one thing that most of them don't mess with. Um, and as you come over there, you see that there is... Sitting, lying, what are you doing, Raljak? I'm going to wait until everyone else like goes through the food line. Okay. Because I kind of want to go during a more isolated time where everyone else is kind of situated. Um, yeah. But I'm just going to be kind of sitting, watching. Okay. And waiting uh, for that opportunity. Yeah, no problem. Um, and Zoltana, what are you up to right now? Just so I can keep in mind where everyone is. Uh, she's just going to go sit somewhere by herself uh, she doesn't really want to deal with anybody but I don't think she'd go and eat in the temple I feel like <laughs> she <laughs> I feel like she'd eye the temple but she'd see there were people in there and she'd be like mm, I really don't want to have to be too close to other people who are in the temple okay um all right so uh, who else in the temple um uh, currently it's just yourself and Fuck is your name? Balance. Balance. <laughs> <laughs> it's really off putting because normally I have like little tags around my screen telling me who yeah, everyone yeah. is, but I've got no pictures of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult. <laughs> so, yeah, um, at the moment it's just Balance and Roljack in the temple. Okay. I sit some more. <laughs> uh, Balance walking into the temple looks around. Uh, finds a just an empty pew and sits down uh it's just me and the mysterious dragonborn correct uh balance is gonna have like a few spoonfuls of the gruel and then uh just kind of looking around thinking about uh caden being like hey you should probably go make friends balance is gonna be like mm. fuck that you you there uh what is your name Brawl kind of looks around as if there's someone else in the temple, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, did I disturb you? Were you praying? No, you are talking to me. Well, yes, it's just you and me in here. Um, my name is Rawl. Rawl Jacques. Who the fuck are you? My name is... Uh, Balance. 
they fuck kind of a name is balance. Balance like pauses and purses his lips, trying really hard not to just lash out. <laughs> <laughs> it is a name, regardless of what you may think of it. Have you not had your breakfast? Is that are you are you hangry? He kind of looks back over to the lunch line. Um, at this point, um, you probably got like. <sighs> Probably about five or six people, but you reckon that's like having looking around in the yard, you can probably see about 20, 25 people. So it's probably the last lot going through now. Okay. Um, speaking of which, I I should take care of that. I'm, uh, we can address what it is that you are talking to me for. When I get back, I'll be right back. And he kind of, like, uh, r- kind of hurriedly um, <laughs> makes his way over there. He clearly doesn't want to miss the lunch line. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, Sultana, um, are you just trying to find somewhere quiet to sit down? Um, at the moment, you kind of have like a like the gang sort of like spread out all over the place. Um, there's not many quiet places to sit on your own. If there's not a lot of quiet places to sit on my own, I probably would go to the temple actually. Um, probably the quietest place other than the temple would probably be, uh, probably between the temple and the, uh, the kind of like serving area, um, in, in sort of the center, you've got like the two humans who are sort of like just training and sparring a little bit, um, just sort of like, you know, throwing, throwing odd bits at each other, sort of a bit like, you know, a catch and such a thing. Um, and there's, there's a couple of benches sitting near to those. Uh, there are a couple of other people on there. But, you know, seeing that you are who you are, they kind of like scoot over a little bit should you wish to go sit there. and Wait, but the humans are playing catch, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what if they like throw the ball and they hit me in the face? What if I want Then that? you will take I think damage. She... <laughs> <laughs> I think that she would go and she'd... she wouldn't go into the temple, but she would go like sit lead you up can against the temple. Yeah, you could definitely sit on the floor at the edge of the temple area. That's not a not a problem. Yeah, um, there's not so much of a wall there, but it is like a shaded area. Um, there's kind of a little bit of an awning over the top, sort of. So you could definitely go sit like near there, um, but there would be no seats for you to sit upon. It'll be, it'll be the earth, I'm afraid. Yeah, she'd, she'd go sit on the ground by the temple. Okay, you, you can sit down and have, have your breakfast. Um, delicious, delicious. It's a uh, gruel... The both of you that have had the gruel this morning, um, it tastes much better than it normally does. It's not quite so watery. It's um, almost... Mm, I think the new lady has put some cinnamon in here. How wonderful. <laughs> uh, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> it's it's almost edible. Hmm. Emphasis on the almost part. <laughs> All right, Ruljak, as you come to um, the uh, as you come to the end of the line, I assume you're trying to tack yourself on the very end. Yeah, he's gonna like keep his head down and slunch like slouch over a little bit and uh, <laughs> try to make himself as unintimidating as possible. Um, just kind of keeping his eyes down, um, kind okay. of listening to what Caden the suggestion that Caden gave. Him. <laughs> As you uh, as you approach and uh, and um, uh, the last like serves like the person in front of you, she's like, "Well, um, nice to meet you." And she looks at you, and you just hear, "Um, okay, uh, hi." Um, and she pulls out a bowl and she begins to serve two particularly large helpings of gruel, and she puts it out in in front of you into your hands, like, um. It's a nice day. Is it? They all run together for me. Oh. Nice day for you? It's uh, it's my first day. Um, well, I've I not been sad, been nice. so... It is good that you've had a nice day then. He's <laughs> smiling warmly. He's very happy with his food. Is he <laughs> Is he still looking down or is he looking at her? No, he's... Yeah, as soon as, like, as soon as she served him generously, he's now, like, smiling at her. <laughs> okay. Um, as you look up at her and she's like, does the half smile, it kind of catches like, sorry, the half laughs, it kind of catches in her throat a little bit as she takes in like 
basically you <laughs> like mm-hmm. as you finally look up you show like the red patch under your, under your throat and she still could see like the proper dragon aspect of which you are um and you see her eyes opening up actually take a perception check for me oh no take an insight check for me okay it's technically why i should have got balance to roll but i'm an idiot 19 19 ooh um she looks shocked and she manages to hold her face in that kind of like thing. But you see her yeah. eyes suddenly dart from like literally scanning you top to bottom. And you feel like you've been x-rayed inside and out. Um, she's definitely studying you. And then when you feel like, you know, that the kind of that moment has passed, she kind of drops the the, the serving spoon that she has. And she do like, you know, ducks down below the counter to, to pick it up and sort of like stands up again. And uh, well, I guess you were the last one. So... Are you okay? Um, yes, yes, um, I'm fine. First day jitters, I guess. Um, well, I'm, I hope that, I'm, uh, I'm, okay, I hope that goes away. <laughs> me, me too. Um, I don't know if I'll last, I don't know if I'll last if I don't, so trial by fire. Um, I'm Kythea. Um, who, who are you? Aurora Jacques. Um, Pleasure sir, to meet n- you. N- nice to meet you, um. I guess I'll see you at lunch. And she sort of like picks up the empty, like uh, mostly empty, uh, um, uh, like uh, kind of like large bowl of gruel and sort of like heaves it out with a huge effort. It definitely looks too big for her um, as one of like the other um, like servers comes over and tries to help her out. And uh, she sort of like gives one big heft and like they get it out together and they go back towards the, the kitchen area. So I grab my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and your bowl I'm with a, your almost uh, edible gruel. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the temple. Okay. Um, as you go back towards the temple, um, the you come across a dwarf that you recognize very well. This dwarf has fiery red hair. It's short, no beard. And you know him as Grip Fist Fisty Stone Spear. Um, more importantly, this guy is a part of the double, double ones. And he, for the last year that you have been here, has pretty much every single day had a go at you one way or another. And as you turn to step inside and go back towards the temple, you see this, well, I'm not going to beat about the bush. He's a big guy, but none of it is muscle. And he steps out in front of you, um, He's obviously somewhat shorter than you, and he looks up at you and he says, Right, Dragonborn, you know how this goes. How does this go? Tell me again, I forgot. uh, Tell me, (laughs) how is your friend that you sent over? What was his name? P.T. Pate? I don't remember. The young one. Did he heal up? Peter. Or did he make it? I haven't seen him around in a minute. Peter go, went back to the uh, went to the infirmary. He's not been out since. Mm, now me and my lads, shame. and as he tips his head a little bit, you see that the rest of the double ones have essentially almost circled you. There's probably about four of them around you, including uh, Fisty. Now we can either do this the really easy way, or we can do this the really hard way. Now I am I'm looking for a fight, lad. Oh, that is good. Always good to hear. Yeah. So you're going to hand it over, or aren't you? He starts eating. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a great response. Um, as you start eating, um, Grip Hook just like nods his head a little bit. And the guys on your left and on your right, they come and grab your arms. Mm-hmm. Do you want to do? Um, I'm going to kick the dwarf in front of me. <laughs> because my okay. legs are not restrained. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, make an attack roll. Okay. Uh, by the way, Zoltana and uh, Balance, if you are looking out in that general area, you can probably see this going on, even if you can't hear all the exact words. 18. Ooh, yes. Uh, funnily enough, nobody's wearing armor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so an 18 definitely hits. Uh, you kick him square in the chest and you hear as like his body sort of like unfolds itself around your foot just as you pull it out in time. And um, you you feel a sharp connecting as the guy to your left throws a punch at you. Oh okay. shit, now I get to roll. You do. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. 
the guy on the left botches. Um, there's no amount of modifiers in the world that's going to make that any better for him. Um, <laughs> as he lets go of your left hands, as your of, of your your left hand side, he goes to swing a punch at your face, but completely overestimates like you're you're pulling yourself back from having kicked the dude in front, and he just squares. He punches the other guy square in the face, and that guy also <laughs> lets go and puts his hands to his nose as you see blood begin to drip down his face. Are you still holding your breakfast? Um. I would like to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, take a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> because two people have just grabbed you and thrown punches and you have kicks. So. Oh, yeah. No, it's very hard for me to hold on to my very good breakfast. Uh, 15. Uh, I'm going to say yes. You managed to hold on to your breakfast. <laughs> what do you want to do now? Uh, the guy to your left, the guy to your right are both uh, like, oh, I'm I'm really sorry, mate. Oh, I can't believe I punched you. And Grip looks like sort of like doubled over like, oh, God. I'm going to um, hope that I've made enough, um, you know, <laughs> made them look like fools enough and <laughs> try to kind of um, get past them. Okay. Um, as retreat you... to the temple. Yeah, as you go to retreat to the temple um, and you walk past Gr- uh, Fisty, um, he grabs out for your ankle. I need you to make another dexterity saving throw. 17. Yep. Uh, as you see his arm come out to grab you, but you simply just lift your leg a little bit higher and walk over him. <laughs> um <laughs> And the you know, as you're walking away from this scene, um, Balance and Zoltana, if you're watching this, um, you see that a couple of the guards rush to intervene, um, and you see like you know about half, probably about half a dozen of them, just like circle on the floor and like you know pull them apart and you know give them a, a chatting to. And Caden is one of those, and he picks up grip, um, grip, um, fisty, and uh, he he takes him, he takes him aside. You know that he's like the direction they're heading. He's taking him back towards his cell. Um, breakfast be damned whether he's eaten it or not. Um, I am eating very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Balance is just watching this all unfold, very interested. Am I not being taken back to the to my cell? <laughs> uh, no, because you've <laughs> walked away. <laughs> you've literally stepped <laughs> over and they continue walking. Um, generally, when Caden is on board, he's aware that this happens, but he can't always stop it. Um He's he's one of the more friendly guards. Um, if you don't start shit, he tends not to repercuss you. Some of the other guards for sure will, and Lyndon, who's the head screw, he definitely would. But you seem to have gotten away with it this morning. Yeah, I'm going to just kind of casually walk in, <laughs> eating very quickly, <laughs> and uh, sit back down. You handle yourself quite well. Mm. Thank you, I guess. You're not with them, are you? Do I look like I would be one of them? Can never tell. Well, if, let me answer you with this then. And uh, Balance pulls up his sleeves, showing there's no tattoos. No, you see, the only tattoo I've got is this one right here. And he just taps his forehead. You know, the initiates, they don't get tattoos. They still have to come fight me. I suppose that's true, but I haven't come to fight you, have I? Well, that is good. What is it exactly that interests you with me? Nothing in particular, I suppose. I haven't been out of my cell in quite a long time, and I found it interesting that you were sitting here alone. And I found it more interesting the way you handled those, uh, hooligans. Well, you can see I'm alone because I have many friends. Hmm. I'm guessing Caden has given you a talk like he gave me one, then. Mm, Caden is nice to you. Caden is accommodating to me. Sultana, what are you up to at the moment? Uh, she probably uh, rolled her eyes at the double ones and went back to eating and maybe like has been glancing back at the temple and thinking about like going in and, you know, uh, after she's done eating to like say a little prayer okay at some point during this conversation then you probably definitely would have finished your breakfast um so yeah at, at some point during this conversation probably about where i just interrupted you guys you become aware that this female dwarf walks into the temple and is uh how do you pray to your god who is your god uh my god is tear and uh she just kind of goes to like uh a 
How many benches are there in the temple area? Um, let's say that there are four. Uh, she'll go to one that's not near uh, the strange elf and, and uh, dragonborn and kind of sit down, uh, put her hands in her lap, bow her head and close her eyes and, you know, commune with uh, Tyr. Cool. Um, balance, you having not really left your cell all that recently, um, you notice that unlike most of the other prisoners here, Zoltan, uh, the female dwarf opposite you, um, actually has a religious symbol around her neck, and she also has a bronze ring on that same necklace. Hmm. I'll leave you three to it. Bral's just kind of eating still, <laughs> um, not paying much mind. <laughs> Balance after a moment just goes, hmm, it would seem that neither of us have friends, and yet now it seems we're making more friends. Raul does not make many friends. This is unlikely. It makes me suspicious. Well, did you invite her here? I didn't. You there? What's your, what is your name? Uh, Zoltana like opens her eyes and turns around and kind of glares and goes, "If you'll excuse me, I'm praying. I didn't come in here to talk with you." So. Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm sorry. My apologies. I didn't realize that there were any people in this prison that were actually of a religious sort. Please go and go ahead. We'll, uh, well, I should probably finish my breakfast anyways. <laughs> she, uh, she kind of rolls her eyes and goes, yeah, there's not a lot of us in here. Uh, it's all right. I guess it must be weird to come into the temple and actually see someone praying. And she like rolls her eyes again. <laughs> <laughs> um, at this point, um, probably as you guys are finishing off the last of your breakfast and uh, acknowledging the fact that this is weird and, you know, um, Zoltana is rolling her eyes, you become aware of a high-pitched sound. Um, much. It would be, <laughs> for those of you familiar, um, it's actually the sound you hear when the alarm spell goes off. And you know that this is a call to the parade grounds. Well, it looks like they're playing our music. Best go see what they want. Mm. And Raw stands up reluctantly. Balance as well. <laughs> you become aware that there is a huge flurry of activity. Um, this is something that one does not generally hang about for. Um, most you can see the prisoners, those who are you know still are not. Um, let's say those who are not put into solitary, like your friend Fisty. Um, you see that everyone is scurrying around, then putting down any weights. You know, the, the two humans playing catch have, have dropped this down and they immediately, everyone immediately gets themselves into three lines, um, uh, roughly 10 apiece. So you can essentially tag onto the end of one other line. You can tag yourself onto the holes in the other lines. It's entirely up to yourself where you wish, what you wish to do. But this is the procedure. Uh, balance is probably going to go onto whatever line Ral is on, just because of balance is mildly curious about Ral. Okay. Ral goes to whichever one he recognizes the least amount of people that fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, line has the least amount of assholes? <laughs> the line with the least amount of assholes is the, well, everyone here is in prison. I'm going to throw that one out there. Um, <laughs> I'm not an asshole. The, uh, not the, the line with the least amount of assholes is probably, let's say it's the middle line. Um, and yeah, let's say it's the middle line and it's the least amount of ass assholes due to the fact that there is the least amount of people in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, at over your entire year here, um, Rojak, probably a good portion of the people here have probably tried to prove their metal against you. Oh yeah. So the number of enemies are, uh, sorry, the number of inverted commas friends, um, i.e. non-hostiles are quite small. You could probably count oh, yeah, them on no. one hand. <laughs> yeah. If there was a line of 30 people and two of them didn't fuck with Raul, he would still stand in that line. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, you go to the line with the least mad people. In this case, it's going to be the second row. Uh, Zoltana, what are you? What are you doing, my dear? Mm, I'll follow them. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I got nothing better to do. I got to go to a line anyway. <laughs> Good point. All right, you. Yeah, everyone forms up into tight ranks pretty quickly. Um, you know that for this, that you need to be facing a particular direction because as you as you look across, the sun would be in your eyes, especially at this time in the morning. It's, for those of you in the know, is there to essentially distract you and make you uh, 
let's say able to respond pro- properly as the light is literally streaming into your eyes. And you become aware that the guards have all formed up inside the the, the, guard, the, um, the proving grounds as well. And you become aware that coming in from the uh, the administrators part of the building, you see a man. He's, a, he's an elf. He's a particularly well-built elf. Um, he's got fair hair, pretty bronze skin. Um, and his arms are probably as thick as most people's legs. They are they are definitely well built. Um, and this man's name is Lindrin, and Lindrin is the uh, the head screw here. And he comes out. He seems chipper. He seems quite happy this morning. He's uh, very happy with himself for whatever reason. And he begins to walk up and down the lines. Um, and he occasionally speaks to some people. Occasionally, you see him just straight up punch a person um, for whatever reason. But he always speaks very low, very quietly to each. So it's very difficult to hear what he's saying. Um, and you see a few of the guards openly flinching as he goes round, administering his realignment, as he calls it. It's something that most of you are pretty well familiar with. And then he marks, begins to make his way along the second line. And he comes to Sultana. Sultana, is there anything about your prison gear which is not standard? Uh, probably my <laughs> ring. <laughs> <laughs> he and also your your uh, your symbol of tear. Uh, yeah, probably my my necklace with my symbol and my ring is not standard prison gear. <laughs> Absolutely, it is not. Um, you've been here for a good couple of years. I think we said five. Was that right? Four. Four. Excellent. You've been here for roughly four years. This is, if not weekly, uh, you know, it's it's sometimes, you know, a little bit more frequent than every time he walks past you, he steps back again and he puts his, his hand out and he runs his finger along um, your necklace to the actual symbol and he looks down at it, looks back up you, says, so you're still with that, are you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> of course I am. One day you will open your eyes, little girl. But until then, you're safe. And he gives you, like, he pats the side of your face with his hand. um, And then he moves on in the line and he comes to balance. Is there anything about your gear that is not standard or up to snuff today? None that I would think of. He walks past you. He looks you up and down. He locks eyes with you. This man... You're not sure if he knows who you are. Uh, It's not often that you come out here. Quite often you are, inverted commas, locked in solitary. And he gives you a bit of a questioning look. Seems to remember who you are. It's been some while since he's seen you. And then he moves on to Roljak. Roljak, is there anything about your gear that is not standard up to snuff this morning? Yeah. (laughs) Like what? (laughs) Uh, like his shirt that is ruined and his uh, lack of pants <laughs> and probably flip flops. I don't think he can wear flip flops. Um, he looks down at your feet. He looks at your wraps. Raw mm. smiles at him very sarcastically. <laughs> Today is not getting particularly good for you again, is it, Dragonborn? And he looks up and he sees the neckline of your shirt, how it's all been like, you know, frayed and, and slightly dissolved and torn apart. And he's like, how many shirts have we had to replace for you? You are costing us good money. And he goes to punch you in the face. Okay. I just sit there. So better roll. <laughs> You're just going to take it? <laughs> yeah. I just want to double check. <laughs> That's not going to do it though. <laughs> Um, it's a 19 versus your armor class. Oh, a 19. Yeah, that'll do yeah. it. <laughs> I've not added any modifiers on the roll because... Yeah, okay. I got it. Yeah. Uh, that hits you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, he, he punches you square... He punches you in the stomach um, and you kind of like bend, you know, you kind of like uh, take a... take a, It's kind of winded you a little bit and you take... It's plus five. So that's eight points of damage. Okay. And he, as you sort of like, you're doubled over a little bit. Um, he's quite tall for an elf. Um, 
and he sort of like grabs your shoulder and grabs you by the by your maw and pushes your head up a bit. I and smile says, sarcastically. <laughs> again with the sarcasm. Um, <laughs> he he lifts your head up again and he says, "Hmm, clearly." single beating a day isn't enough for you and he gives you another right hook um square to the face this time are you attempting to do anything or are you just going to take it again i'll dodge this one yes you do because that was 11 versus armor class (laughs) um you sort of like you as he goes to like swing almost very obviously to you you kind of like duck out the way a little bit and you then just see his face just swell up red and he's very particularly angry and he just looks at you with gritted teeth and he says, guards, take this one. And about two, uh, being that it's you, about three guards turn up. One of them is in fact Caden. <laughs> and he's almost apologetic, but the three of them do clamp their hands on you. And, you know, are you doing anything to resist them? Or are you going with this? No, he's good. He's good. You're going to go with it. Okay. Yep. Um, the three of them grab hold of you and um, they they drag you back towards your cell. Um, and I'll get back to you in a moment. Um, the Linden, uh, Lindren, sorry, he continues his inspection of the rest of the group. A couple of them, you see the humans have like, in, in their catch game, have sort of like scuffed up their trousers and there's a, there's a rip in one. And this guy gets a solid punch to the nose and you see it, you hear it crack and you see the blood drip down. And this guy continues walking along the line. And then he finally admits that he's done and walks back into admin without a problem. And you hear the telltale sign of the high pitch alarm as it goes off once again. And you guys are free to continue about your business. What are Sultana and Balance doing right now? You can see that your maybe friend, maybe not friend, is in the <laughs> corner with Caden and one other guard. Another one has been sent away to do something else. And Caden is apparently speaking to, um, oh God, what the hell is your name? Raul. Raul Jack. Uh, Raul. <laughs> and he's talking to the other guard. Are you two investigating this? Are you going back to the temple? Are you just going to... Netflix and chill. I don't know. What, what are you up to? <laughs> uh, balance is probably going to go close enough to be within earshot and just okay. see what the guards are saying. And then depending on what they're saying, he might approach or not. Raul okay. wants to go to Netflix and chill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zoltana is going to go uh, back to the temple to uh, finish praying since she was interrupted and she okay. wanted to she she needs to commune with her god Excellent. make friends they said it'll be fun they said of course i try to be friends with the dwarf that's got a stick up their ass <laughs> she's pious and needs time man maybe she's gone through some stuff man maybe she's gone through some stuff give her a chance this is prison what are you talking maybe about nobody goes jail. through anything <laughs> everyone has baggage get over it um <laughs> okay so when you are taken to one side, Raljak, and I will allow you balance to decide when it is that you meander across in this conversation. Um, I'm listening in. Yeah. Uh, Cadence uh, turns to one of the guards and he says, um, I, I've, 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 I've got this. Me, 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 and, me, me and Steve, we've got this. Um, you, you, you go back to, to, to work. Raljak won't be any problem, will, will you? No, no problem at all. Good, good, good. That, that's C, C, got this. And the other guy meanders off. Um, he goes about his job. He, he, Caden is understood to have a certain way with a lot of people and he, he trusts him. Um, and Caden looks at Roljak and says, I, 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 I want you to, to, to try, try and hide. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I c- couldn't help you t- today. You don't need to stick your neck out for me. No, you no, have done you, enough. You, you, you you don't 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 do deserve this, and you see that the other guard, um, who is a, a dwarf, and um, this dwarf has he's completely bald. Um, he doesn't even have a beard. Doesn't even have eyebrows. He has no hair at all on his body, and he looks up at you, questioningly, when Caden says that you don't really deserve this, and he says, uh, "I I know what you're in for. He you deserve this. You deserve everything." I would agree. See. We should put him in solitary now and be done with it. Leave him I there would for agree. rot. 
and he spits at the ground. And Caden looks at him concernedly um, and he sort of like jerks his head to one side. Um, look, 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 I've, 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 R- R- Ral and I are, are kind of friends. And again, the dwarf's like, you can't make friends of any of this lot. They're all scum. All right, let's, let's take him down to, to Solitor. Let's not be having any more of this rubbish. Uh, and Balance is going to intrude at this point. Yep, go for it. Uh, so Balance walks up, kind of acting uh, like innocent in, in a sense, just being like, Ral, there you are, my friend. We never got to finish having our conversation, what with the uh, meeting here and all. Why don't we head back to the temple? We can ha- uh, finish having our chat, you and I. Hey, hey, prisoner, what do you think you're doing? We're having a conversation here. No, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. No, no, sorry. no, you're it... going to step back right now. Oh, okay, I'm taking a step back, right? All right, okay. <laughs> I took a step back. Can I have my friend now so we can go have our talk? Caden, you're in charge, but these are all scum and they all deserve to be in solitary or hung or worse. They won't put me in solitary. It is too fun a game to watch me struggle. Yeah. You're one of those strange ones, aren't you? You're probably meant for prison life. Bloody lot. And he looks at Caden and again he goes to take your arm and Caden just steps forward and looks at him kind of sternly. He's like, I'm, 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 I'm chain of command here. You, you'll leave this be now. And they have that moment of a battle of wills and the dwarf throws his hands up and he walks away. You can hear him muttering as he goes like, it's going to get so bloody killed. He's fucking soft with this lot. And he sort of goes off and uh, you see him having a stern conversation with the humans who again playing catch destroy, you know, despite the blood that's kind of like dripping down one of their noses. Caden, you are going to lose your job or your neck. You really have to stop this. I, I, I'm, I'm... I've I've known you for for a long long time. You know there is nothing you can do. I'm, I I knew you but before you, you came here. Yes. But you I I knew you, you wouldn't Yes. Yes. I, I I he kind of like takes you to one side very aware that balance is there and he says I I'm I'm well aware that that you, I I think you're innocent so I don't believe you deserve to be here. Right, and he's innocent, and he's innocent, and he's innocent, and all I have to do is tell Lindren that we're all innocent, and they will let us go out, right? No, that is not how this works. You don't need to be sticking your neck out for me anymore. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna accept that. Um, if, if you, <sighs> I, I have to, I have to make, make a show of at least put, putting you some, somewhere out of, I, I, ear, ear, earshot. So, let's, let's, let's go, go, go. Go to go to the kitchens. It's 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 quiet there. There's there's only a, a few a few other a few other servers. So at least at least at least for for, for a short time. And um, he points you off in the direction of the kitchen, and he looks over at Balance, and he's like, "You you you you've you've made a fr- friend this morning. Is is that right?" You could say that. I was trying to take your advice, at least a, a little bit into consideration. Uh, so far, this one has been. Interesting. I tried talking to the other one, the dwarf that was in the temple. She didn't oh, seem very oh. friendly, but I'll try again. So, 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 so Tan is a, a good, a, a good, a good sort. A deep, deep. I, th- I think it's it, it is in there some, somewhere. <laughs> if you say so, I'll be sure to re- report into you, Captain. Balance like does like a friendly mock salute, just kind of dicking around, <laughs> and then goes back to the temple. Okay. Um. Okay, we'll go back to the temple first because we haven't heard from Sultana in a bit. All right, you make your way back towards the temple. Uh, Balance walks into the temple. Where is Sultana? Uh, she's sitting uh, back at the front uh, on the bench she was on before. And uh, she's just about finished up communing uh, with Tear in her mind. So she's kind of, uh, it looks like she's almost like coming out of a trance. Sultana. I would like you to make a. Let me just make sure I bring to the right bit. I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, it's a fifteen. Okay. Um. You feel the touch of tear, but it's restrained. It's not. There's something blocking you, and you don't know if it's you or if it's being in this place or your exhaustion or everything you've been through, but 
it's that little bit out of reach. You're close enough to sort of sense it's there, but not enough to actually make direct communion today. She kind of sighs, like, a little sad, a little wistful. Upset that your God has abandoned you. What's that? Well, that was a very profound sigh, one that I've let out often. (laughs) She looks at Balance like she thinks he's a little crazy, like... (laughs) <laughs> that's a that's a bit of a personal question to be asking someone you just met, isn't it? I'm sorry if you'd rather we can spend the next couple of years getting to know each other since it seems that you and I have a rather long life ahead of us. Well, with you being a dwarf and me being an elf and all, I don't imagine that we're going to be dying of old age anytime soon anyways. <laughs> that's true. And I got a long sentence ahead of me too, so I don't know about you. You might be out of here before me. Who knows? Uh, that's a funny one if I've ever heard a joke Um, we'll cut back to the kitchens Caden is leading you back to the kitchens Raja you've been here a couple of times it's one of those quiet safe spots that Caden will take yourself and a few others that he's taken a bit of a liking to occasionally just to take them out of the oppressiveness and the closeness of having all of these criminal scum around basically um, and he, you know, he, he's, he sits you down and you see, uh, Kythea is like working over in the corner, working on lunch, you would assume. Um, and she looks over and she, she smiles at you and gives you a, a little bit of a wave. Rel nods and smiles. Um, so hi again. Hello. Hope you're having a better day than I am. <laughs> um, yeah, you look a little bit beaten up, and she sort of like, um, like claps her, like rubs her hands together, and you see like the dust coming. Yeah, sorry, the dust. That would be a terrible thing to eat. Um, you see the flour <laughs> coming off of her hands, um, as she, as she like walks over to you, and like she looks you up and down, and she says, uh, "I, I can help some of that if you want." Uh, how do you mean? Um, before I came here, I, I I trained with an alchemist. I can try and patch your wounds up a bit, and uh, Caden Caden smiles, and he says, "Uh." I'll 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 leave leave you to it then. Um, Ra- 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 now don't 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 go eating her. And he uh, he walks out. Ra looks actually a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, with Caden leaving. Take a <coughs> take an inside check at disadvantage. Oh, seven. Excellent. <laughs> she seems happy and cheerful enough to help you out and she she goes around the kitchen bustling around pulling a few things together um and she gives you um she gives you like she blends it down into a like a something very quickly you know you see her like uh, grinding with the pestle and she comes over and gives you this kind of like mixture of herbs and like this sort of like very thick oily substance and uh, she hands it over to you and says i i think this might help out well at least it'll help the wounds that you got today why are you helping me Um, she cocks her head a little bit and it's, she's difficult to read at this point because of your seven and she (laughs) says, I, I trust that there's more to you than meets the eye. I think no one trusts Ralph for anything. Well, and then anyways, I don't have any way of repaying you for this. Uh, she, she, she sits down like on the floor opposite you cross-legged. She, she seems to have no fear of you whatsoever. Um, and she says, uh, um, I've been told I have a gift. Um, I can sometimes just sense things about people. And I sense that you're, there's more to you. I don't think you're going to harm me voluntarily. So I'll help you. Now, the other friend you had, the the elf with the the tattoo on his head, and she waves her head like her hand in like the rough rough place. Like him, I'm not so sure about. Mm. Well, me neither. But as you can tell, I'm not so sure about many people in here. No, um, I, I guess not. As you can tell, I'm skeptical of you as well. I don't know why you're helping me. I don't have a way of repaying you for this. I don't know what you are trying to gain. I could look out for you. Um, but that is very limited as I am a prisoner. That is not really how this works. Well, let's just say not everyone is Lindren or 
some of the other people here. Um, Just most of them to me, which is strange. Yeah. As to why I have so many people helping me today. <laughs> Maybe it's just your lucky day. And she gives you kind of like, hmm. on your seven, you can't really read her expression. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's going to ride um, that seven forever, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're riding that seven forever with this girl. Right. Um, <laughs> it's at that point that Caden comes back um, and he looks a little worried. Um, and he, he gestures you to, to go with. Are you going to use or consume the thing that she's given you or are you going to give it back to her? Yeah, I'm going to pick it up and I'm gonna, before I, I kind of look at it and then look at her kind of in a testing, not sure way. She just smiles at you. And then I drink it and hurry along with Caden. Roll a d4 plus three. Okay. It was poison, you die. Six. Six, you restore six hit points. Woo. Woo. Um, Caden looks worried and he, as I say, he comes and, and, and pulls you away and... Uh, he grabs you, um, like, uh, like as you're going out the kitchen, like in, in the corridor, he grabs both your arms and he looks, uh, I guess up at you cause you're like seven foot or something stupid like that. Almost seven foot. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not tall for a human anyway, <laughs> but he's definitely shorter than seven foot. Um, he grabs both your arms. He looks up at you and he says, um, I, I, I know that, that, that I know, I know a little bit about you and, 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 and your, your, your aimer, um. You you need to know know something, and and I don't I don't know how it's going to go for you. I, I'll do what what I, what I can, especially for some some of you you and, and Balance and, and Zoltana and, and and Liana. But it it appears the the reason why why Lindrin is so happy is that that Falsum F- Falsum's become Dawn. Hmm. And what does this mean for us? F- F- Falsum. Becoming dawn. That the laws, the laws for what what you've done, you, you don't know what the, the pen, penalty for that that is. Right, the same penalty I got when I came here. This is why I ask you not to stick your neck out for me. I was always going to die here. But you 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 weren't gonna d- die die f- for years. That this this means you're. I, I don't know how how long, but L- Lyndon Lyndon says he's go- going to put the the class one p- prisoners t- to death by by tomorrow morning. Hello, everyone. We're all here, voiced by Neil, that fucking guy. Anyways. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you missed the Backstories episodes, there are for sure a lot of breadcrumbs for you to be picking up on. If you are enjoying the show, the best way to help us at the moment is to leave a rating and review on iTunes. We love getting feedback from everyone. Many, many thanks to the Spark Network for bringing us aboard. We are a member of the Spark Network. You can find them at thespark.network, where you can find more information about other podcasts on the network. You can find the podcast as well as all of the crew members on Twitter. Uh, You can find the podcast at TLDPod, and you can find the crew members from there, or you can follow the links in the descriptions to find basically all of this information that I'm giving you now. If you have any questions about the show, feel free to reach out to us on Twitter, or you can find us via email at the lucky die podcast at gmail.com special thanks to jason basil for doing the artwork to the show i hope i am not butchering your name but uh you know with this accent pretty much everything is butchered um <laughs> jason did a fantastic job on the art for the show i said paint me like one of your french girls and he did so uh special thanks to jason for the fantastic fantastic logo and uh the art which you can find on our twitter thanks again for listening go check out the other shows on the spark network please leave a rating and review it it will help us so much feel free to come and shout at us on twitter uh we love hearing from you guys so thank you very much for listening and we will see you the next time Also, every now and then after this little bit, uh, there will be 
potentially some bloopers from the show, kind of like the one after this. So if you're ever interested in hearing us fuck up, here you go. <laughs> oh yeah, Casey, I forgot to say, every time you roll something, just say what you rolled and how much it was. Just because okay. obviously they can't say it, I, you know. I trust you guys when you say you've rolled what you've rolled, so. What are you talking about? This isn't, this isn't a video podcast? Wait, we're not <sighs> streaming this? Shit. Um, <laughs> That's weird. This is why everything feels awesome. Well, Jack was made for the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think everyone here is. <laughs> you were made for the big cartoon. screen, like the square block was meant for the circular hole. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Let's okay. let's stop that right mm, now. <laughs> I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna roll a punch you now. <laughs> <laughs> the Spark Network. Imagine what your idea can do.